afternoon. First of all, Happy New Year to you. This is the first episode of Deadline in the year of 2023. I'm your host. I'm Poochie Hill. I am here today with one, one of the winningest coaches in the United States of America of college football. And his name is Rick Ginacola, newly retired from Mount Clare State University football. And he is a son of Newark, New Jersey and a product of Newark, New Jersey. And we're gonna talk about not so much football, but the much, ab much about of shaping hearts and minds in life through the game of football and what propelled him to be a continuous teacher, mentor, coach, friend, and God-fearing man. How are you today, Coach? Pooji, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I, I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, we might as well jump right into it. Give me and give the audience a little background of from uh, being a red braider at East Side, on through college at Rowan, and how you got into coaching. Well, as you mentioned, uh, I was born and raised in Newark, ironbound section, down neck section, whatever term is, is used. Um, my family, mom and dad, also were born and raised in Newark. We lived in Newark our whole lives until I got married. In my first two years of marriage, I was still living in Newark uh, until we uh, were able to buy a home and uh, we moved to Cedar Grove and that's, that's where I live and still live now. And as a young man, young boy, uh, athletics was very important to me. My dad was not a, an athlete, but enjoyed watching athletics and big baseball fan. Okay. Big baseball fan. Like the Giants. Loved Willie Mays. Okay. Uh, all the arguments used to come up about Willie Mays, who's better, Willie or, or Mickey Mantle? And, and the, the, the arguments raged on and on and on, but he loved the Giants. He loved Willie Mays. Took me to the polo grounds. That was my first game to see before they decided to, to move to the West Coast. Okay. And after that, went to the Yankees. He said, I can't root for the people on the West Coast. I gotta root, <laughs> I gotta be on the East Coast here and, and root for the Yankees now. Didn't want to know anything about the Dodgers though, so they're, they're, they're not even in the, in the conversation. But seriously, uh, as a young boy growing up, we played all the time. Any, any sport, it really doesn't matter. If you, if you went down, we lived in the playground all the time. And if the basketball court was taken, we'd play stickball. If the field was open, we'd play softball. If it was football season, we played football, and we played. And we never really had organized sports when I was growing up until I ended up becoming a freshman in high school at uh, North East Side. But we played, and there was nobody coaching anybody. You know, you'd choose up sides, play, you're with him, you're with him, and we always were able to, well, we're one guy short. You're gonna have nine, we're gonna have eight. Okay, when you guys get up, you don't hit to the right side. You hit the ball, we made up our own rules. Okay. And we just played, and we just played. And starting out then in, in high school was the first time where I ever got a chance to play, organize anything. And from that point, it went on. Uh, I had a successful career in, in high school as a, as a football player and a baseball player, made all city, made all county, both sports. Um, got to, got a chance to, to uh, attend Rowan, uh, which was called Glassboro at the going time. Going back, we're going back. Going back a little bit, going back a little bit. I, uh, and it was, it was the first time that I was coached and spent the four years there. I was an all East, East Coast player. Um, certainly not good enough to go to the next level. I, I, I knew that and when I graduated, I received a phone call from um, 
Mr. Fred Hill, when he found out that I was hired by the East Orange Board of Education to teach mathematics, and when he read that I was, that I was going to teach there, he called me up because he saw my resume and he saw that I had played two sports, and he uh, said, would you be interested in coaching? And truth being, it was the first time that I ever, ever thought about coaching. Really? I thought my career as an athlete was over. I was going to be one of those weekend warriors and, and, and go play in this league and that league with guys who were 45 and 50 years old, and, um, which is nothing wrong with that, but True. that was the only place to, to play. Uh, so I answered him, yes. And it was the first time that, that I thought about, about coaching. Did you know anything about Coach's, Coach Hill's athletic um, honors and things of that nature? That no, time? didn't know him at all. Really? Didn't know him at all. And I learned about him. I learned the type of athlete that he was, that he was a major league baseball player for a short period of time, uh, played for the, um, um, who did he play for? Can't remember the team, but he was, he was a major league baseball player. And when he finished playing, he got into coaching and teaching. And he became, he became uh, uh, quite a coach, but I didn't know him. I didn't know him. So he invited me over his house, and we sat down, and we talked. And um, I should say he talked. I listened. I listened. And he started out by saying this. He said, I don't care what you know. I don't care what you don't know. I don't care what you think you know. <laughs> right away he blew me away with that. He said, what I want from you is your time, your energy, your willingness to learn, your willingness to teach, your willingness to be on time and follow the protocols of what a coach does. Anything after that, I'll teach you. Well. And he blew me away with that one. Speaking on that there, I um, would like to say a little bit about Coach Hill. I had the pleasure of beating him through you, and uh, I found out that him and Milt Campbell, the Olympian, were both all state. In That's right, on the same on the same team, yes. And he was a phenomenal athlete for Clifford J. Scott. The man that I met was very ingenualic, very frank, but most definitely welcoming and approachable and was willing to assist you in any way he possibly could. Getting back to you wanting to go to college and then being accepted in college, you have to give the story of you want to go to Mount Clare State where you eventually ended up and uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny how you wanted to go there and play with your honors and stuff but they chose for you not to come there so you would to be one of their arch rivals in competition. Well it wasn't a question of not wanting to go there. I didn't get accepted there. Okay. My uh, high school grades were, were pretty good. Okay. My SAT scores were not very good. Okay. And in those years, the SAT's uh, scores carried a lot of weight for admissions into most schools. And um, I was rejected. My father was very upset. He did not want me to go away. Now, I had some letters from, from schools down the East Coast in Carolina and uh, and he said, no, you're not going there. You're not going out of the state, you're staying here. I guess he wanted to keep his eye on me a little bit. Uh, not to say that I was a bad kid, but you know, he wanted to keep his eye on me. And um, when my high school coach, uh, Bert Manhoff, who was also my baseball coach as well as football, he, 
he told my family, he said, uh, let me see what I can do. And he called up the head football coach at Rowan, which was called Glassboro at the time. Dick Wacker, the head coach, they were teammates at Rutgers. He made the call, said, I have a young man here I think can help you. Um, what does he need to do? And he gave me the paperwork information. Uh, and I filled it all out, and I got accepted. He helped, he helped get me in. And, uh, you know, the first year, the first year that I was there as a freshman, the school was just, Rowan Glassboro, was putting football back in for the first time. They had dropped football during the Korean War years. Okay. And my freshman year was the first varsity year that we were going to play a full 10-game varsity schedule. We got hammered. We, we got hammered. We were 0-10. We had guys trying to play football who never put a jock on before. <laughs> uh, but they wanted to come out. Next day, they're gone. You know, they, they didn't have an idea of, of what it would be like. The next year, second year, we were 0 and 10 again. The third year, the third year, we were 1 and 9. And the fourth year, we were 2 and 8. So we won three games in four years. And people were quitting and leaving and, and, and all the issues that, that come up. The guys that I played high school with, a couple of them ended up going to Montclair. And the first year we played, we, we lost to them 22-21. Um, and um, after the game, we talked. And they said, why don't you transfer back? Come back and, and, and play with me and Billy and John. I said, no. Coach Wacker got me into school. He helped me. He said, I said, I can't do that. I can't run away from him. And I stayed. And I stayed the whole, the whole four years there. And the senior year, as I said, we were, we were uh, one in nine. Things started to get better. Things started to get better for the program. It didn't show the fruits of the labor until maybe mid-70s mid-70s. So you're one of the building blocks down there. In we started it. My, my class was the first football class that went in. That went in. And uh, it was a tough road. How was your baseball career there? Average. Okay. Average. You know, enjoyed playing. But um, I was a football player first and a baseball player second. I think if I had maybe spent more time with baseball, Maybe it would have been different. Let's go from that there to how important was it to have a father, or should I say a daddy, not just a father? My father and mother both. I'm an only child. My mom couldn't have any more children after, after my birth. And they supported me. They supported me and helped me with almost everything in my life. When we were talking about going to college, one of the last